Hi, I'm Ann Hagen, and I want to welcome you to today's podcast. Today I'm talking to you about how the Lord's favor and grace and mercy is never ending. And as you know from my last podcast, I shared how he healed me of lupus. And when the Lord healed me of lupus, I knew right away that I had been healed. I got up the next morning and literally I could move my arms, my, my shoulders didn't hurt, nothing hurt. There was no pain where for four years I had everyday pain constantly. And I had gone to two different rheumatologists and one of them had given me several medications to take for the, um, the lupus. And as I took the medication every day faithfully, I was really naive about the the effects and consequences of, of medication prescription medication so when i woke up and knew that the lord had healed my body of lupus i went to my rheumatologist got in that day and he said you know we must have made a mistake because your lupus is gone and you're fine so i stopped taking all the medication that i had been prescribed and one of those was an open-ended prescription of vicodin and as you probably know vicodin is a derivative of heroin it's a really strong addictive opiate and the more you take of this uh, opiate the more you need to keep taking it because after a while you know where two work now they aren't working, so maybe four will work. And I abused, got to a point where I just abused the, the prescriptions. And um, I don't know where, people will ask me, and where did you cross the line of taking it as prescribed and then abusing it? And part of it was, is because I was taking so much because I hurt all the time physically that my body got very dependent on the, the prescription drug. But the biggest part of it was that I learned that it numbed everything. Growing up, my coping mechanism in dealing with frustration or sorrow or grief, we moved every year and a half. My dad was in the Navy. Um, I was molested as a child by a loved one. And these things that happened to me, um, as you know, they affect you greatly. and. When I would take the, the Vicodin or the Lortab, whatever the, the opiate was that I was having prescribed at the time, everything just didn't, I didn't feel anything. It, I, it was for the first time in my life, it was this pain-free place where I didn't have to deal with anything. And I liked that much better than my, my growing up coping ne- mechanism, and that was anger. And a lot of you identify with uh, that coping mechanism, um, it for me became my best friend. If I would show anger all the time, and that way people wouldn't hurt me, people could would stay far away, keep their distance. Um, I wouldn't be abused by anybody. Who wants to deal with some girl that's having a fit of rage and throwing things? <laughs> None of you identify with that, I'm sure. But um, so. In taking the medication, it was a, a place where I was numb, and so that's, that's the biggest reason why I abused it. And, and I, I, I know I abused it. It was my responsibility and my choice, and, but I was foolish and never realized the consequences of, of that. And getting off of the prescription drugs was harder than dealing with the lupus for four years, harder than anything I'd ever gone through um, my whole life. I'm 48 years old and, you know, there, we go through a lot of hard things, a lot of struggles growing up. And, and I know right now that there are a lot of you that are out there that feel like you're never going to get set free or things aren't going to turn around for you. That somebody's hurting you, abusing you, taking you for granted and putting you down. And you feel like you're never going to get out of the place you're at. And I want you to know that God knows right where you're at. He knew right where I was at. And he's a good God. He doesn't cause these bad things to happen to us. He never caused me to have lupus. He never caused me to get addicted to drugs. There's a devil out there who hates me and he hates you. And he's going to do everything he can to find your weaknesses, to find my weaknesses, and to try and destroy our lives. If he can't kill us, 
He will take everything away. He'll destroy how we feel about ourselves. He'll destroy us by taking away peace of mind and joy. And he'll make it so that we have no hope. And that's a really bad place to be. And I want you to know, those of you that are struggling right now, especially this time of year, it's been Thanksgiving, and some of you are wondering, what do I have to be thankful for? Well, you're going to find out. I want you to know that the Lord is faithful to his word, that he came to set the captive free. And we are captive, especially as women, in so many different areas with our physical appearance, with how our, our self-esteem, with how we think other people feel about us. And these things affect us in so many ways. And the biggest thing is, is it stops us from doing what God wants us to do, and that is to go out and minister to others, to lead the lost to Christ. You know the world we're living in today. And the Lord wants us to be thankful, not for the stuff, but this is the revelation I got. Be thankful for how faithful he is to his word. I'm so thankful that he's faithful to his word, that he never gave up on me. He's never going to give up on you. And I want you to have hope today because whatever it is that's going on in your life or in your loved one's life, maybe you've given up on somebody else. And sometimes we need to walk away from somebody who is on drugs and keeps stealing those drugs from us or the alcoholic that just, you know, we keep giving them a chance after chance and they just, they don't ever change. Sometimes we need to set up boundaries and walk away, but let that person know we're praying for them and we love them, but we need to stop enabling them. Sometimes that's what needs to happen, but God's never going to give up on you or your loved one. He knows exactly what you're battling with. He knows exactly what you're going through. He's heard your frustration and you say, God, where are you? He's heard you say it. He knows how you feel and he's not angry at you for feeling that way. He's such a good God. His Holy Spirit is gently saying, I'm right here. Put the problem down at my feet and just sit with me and just, I'm right here. He wants you to stop looking at the problem just long enough to see that he is there. And he's not going to leave you or your loved one where they are. And with my drug addiction, it got so bad. I'm, I'm pretty honest, as a lot of you know, with about what I went through. Because I think it's important that you realize that God is not a respecter of persons. And there's, there's consequences to our actions. And when I stopped taking all the medication for lupus, I was left with this drug addiction that just turned my world upside down. And because I had learned as a young person that didn't come from, you know, a, a Christian or a religious home growing up. Um, no, I didn't know how to trust the Lord as a young person. So even when I got saved, I, I was used to trusting me. I'll control it. I'll protect me. I'll protect you. I'll save and rescue everybody. And a lot of you women do the same thing. We do it really with our kids big time. We'll, you know, we'll try to control them so much that when they finally grow up and they're they're these 18 year old or 17 year old or 19 year olds and they're trying to make decisions of their own and their wrong decisions as moms we'll try to interfere and force them to do what we want them to do we're huge control freaks and god wants us to learn to just trust him and let these things go let our children go surrender our teenagers to him and trust that he's going to reveal the truth to him and so, but getting back to the control freak that I was, when I got off of the medication, and I could tell right away something was wrong. Um, I was going through withdrawals. I didn't know at the time that's what it was, but my body ached like crazy. I just, for uh, after 12 hours after I stopped taking the medication, I had pain deep in my bones, deep um, in, in my my legs and my hips and my back and I was shaking really bad. I was going through just bad detox and didn't know. And I'd seen commercials on television. We were living in, in Coppell, Texas at the time. And I'd seen these commercials that said, um, you know, if you have a substance abuse problem, um, you know, get help here. If you don't get help here, get help somewhere. And I looked up the phone number for this ad I'd seen on TV. And uh, it was Charter Hospital at the time. And and I called and I talked to the doctor and I said, I think I've got a real serious addiction um, to the pain medicine that I've been taking and, for the last four years. 
And they asked me, well, how many, you know, Ann, have you been taking every day? And I said, well, I've been taking about, you know, 20 to 30 Vicodin every day. And they fell out. They were, well, you need to get here like yesterday. This could be really serious. And I didn't understand the consequences of, of that. And I said, what, what can happen? And they said, you could have a stroke or a heart attack, a seizure. And you can't just go through this withdrawals unsupervised. It's, it's, it's very painful and it's serious. So I went down, I talked to my husband. And Mike didn't know what I was going through. And then I told him, I go, Mike, I have a problem. Something's wrong with me. I'm a, I think I've got an addiction to the pain medicine I've been on. And see, for me, growing up, I didn't know any drug addicts. We didn't abuse drugs. We abused alcohol and smoked cigarettes and, you know, but we, we never, no one did drugs. And so I did not relate. I didn't understand what I was going through and didn't know what I was gonna to have to go through. So I said to Mike, I've, I've got a problem. I need to go to this hospital and meet with a doctor. And he said, I'm coming with you. We left right away, went to charter and met with a doctor. And I stayed there for several months, several days. It just felt like several months. <laughs> I think it was 21 days. And it was really painful. It was very hard. And uh, they put me on all these other drugs to help me get off of the, the Vicodin. And, yeah, and that was really bad. That was very, I was just lethargic. And I started going to AA and NA meetings. And the thing is, is that at that time, I still felt like, okay, I'm off the drugs. I can control this. So after I got out of charter, I felt like I didn't need to pursue getting any other help because it was something I control. I can control. And the, the truth is, is that God wants us to stay at a place where we're surrendered to him. And mind you, he never caused me to go through this stuff. But as women, we do so many things that make it harder on ourselves. Like thinking, I don't need your help, Lord. I can control this now. I counsel with a lot of drug addicts that are recovering, Christian drug addicts that are recovering. And I can tell right away that they... They haven't really surrendered to the Lord because they're talking about how they're still trying to control the situation where they're at. They're not in a total place of surrender to the Lord. I, I did the same thing. I would get prideful and I would think, well, when am I going to get the checkbook back, Mike? When are you going to trust me again? How, how much longer do I have to prove to you that I can control this and I'm not going to relapse again? And it, it wasn't about me being in control it was about me surrendering to the lord and letting the lord be in control completely of me and staying humble it was about being in a place of humility and it took years i would relapse over and over again i would go for no reason i would go through a situation and it would be an excuse to go call a doctor and lie and tell him that I had a migraine headache so he could prescribe drugs to me. And I would lie to my husband and tell him that I wasn't on drugs, but he could tell by the look in my, you know, you can tell. He could tell the look in my eyes that I was on drugs again. And the Holy Spirit would let him know. And I would lie and lie and then eventually I would let him know, yeah, I've relapsed again, Mike, and I need help. And the truth is, is that all of us have things that we don't really want to surrender to the Lord. All of us women do because it's really painful because we don't want to deal with the issues that God wants us to deal with. And I can sit here and talk to you about all the different times I've been in and out of rehab. I can talk to you about all the different times that I went to places to steal it and how I should be in jail. I can talk to you about the times that I've cut my wrist and try to kill myself because I really believed I would never get set free. But the bottom line is, Jesus wants you to know how much he loves you. He wants you to get the revelation deep in your heart of how much he loves you. And I know that he's going to do that for you. God bless you. Be blessed today. And I'll talk to you next podcast.